In this video, we're going to take a brief look at the conventions for naming cycloalkanes, which contain cyclic arrays of carbons and hydrogens bound to one another. The conventions here are very similar to the ones we've learned already, but there are a few quirks associated with cycloalkanes that we'll address in this video. Let's briefly remind ourselves of the overview of the process that we've seen over the past several videos for naming organic compounds according to the IUPAC system. So the first step is to find and number the parent chain and identify the base name using the length of the parent chain. For cycloalkanes, the parent chain will always be the cyclic array of carbon atoms. And numbering the chain is an interesting issue because unlike an acyclic chain that has a beginning and an end, there's no natural place to begin numbering here. So we'll see how to address this issue when we get into the quirks of cycloalkanes. Step two is to identify the substituents and their positions. And once we've got the numbering scheme down, this is identical to what we did for the alkanes and other classes of organic compounds. We look at the structure of the substituent to determine its name, and we prefix the name of the substituent with the number that illustrates its location. Step three is to list the substituents with their positions as prefixes to the base name. And this is identical to the process we've seen in other examples for the cycloalkanes. So what are some of the quirks of naming cycloalkanes? Well, first of all, the ring is always considered the parent chain unless it's bound to a larger alkyl chain, which is kind of a quirky case. If it's bound to a larger alkyl chain, for example, so we had a five carbon chain with a three membered ring bound to it, then we name the ring as a cycloalkyl in general. So this, for example, is a cyclo propyl substituent. But more often than not, the ring will be a big point of focus when you're naming cycloalkanes, and you'll name the ring as the parent chain. And so, for example, on the left here, we see a seven-membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a heptane, and because it's cyclic, and this is one of the conventions of naming cycloalkanes, we prefix it with cyclo. So cycloheptane refers to a seven-membered ring that's completely saturated. For rings that have one substituent, we assume that that substituent starts at the one position. So this establishes a pretty consistent numbering convention. For a ring that has only one substituent, we start with one, and in fact we can number in either direction, counterclockwise or clockwise. It doesn't really matter because all the other numbers are going to end up being irrelevant, but in any case, a single substituent on a ring is always given the one position, and in fact it's assumed to sit there so we don't necessarily have to say, for example, one methyl cycloheptane. We can just say methyl cycloheptane, and that specifies this compound completely. For rings that have multiple substituents, we give the number one to the first substituent alphabetically. So we need to determine the names of the substituents first. The one that comes first alphabetically is given the number one. In the example you see on the right here, we have a propyl substituent that I'm highlighting in green, and we have a methyl substituent that I'm highlighting in blue. Methyl comes before propyl, so the methyl group gets the number one. And as usual, we try to keep the numbers as small as possible. So here we would number counterclockwise and give the number two to the propyl substituent to keep its number as small as possible. The one exception to this rule of giving the number one to the first substituent alphabetically is the hydroxyl group, which always gets the number one. This is similar to the idea we saw with alcohols, where the hydroxyl group was so important to the molecule that the parent chain had to include the hydroxyl group. In cycloalkanols, or cyclic alcohols, we always give the number one to the hydroxyl group. And we number the other carbons so that the other substituents get the smallest numbers possible. 